somebody here on this afternoon, like uh, copy of God's Word, this uh, written word that is uh, extract from the, uh, the Bible, the only place, of course, where a body can find God's Word uh, written down for us so that we don't uh, forget what God has spoken given us his word that we might know him uh, that through his son Jesus Christ of whom of course the Bible is the record uh, what he has done uh, accomplished that uh, you might come to a knowledge of your maker know him as your savior uh, sins forgiven and uh eternal life in the name of God's Son. These things were written. The Bible says that you might know that Jesus is the Son of God and that believing you might have life in his name. I'd like to have a copy of God's Word. It's offered to you quite freely. Yours simply and only for the taking. No cost, no obligation to you. Freely offered, freely received. That's the way it goes. In the book of Psalms, Psalm 70, where King David, the author of most of them, he cries out to God that uh, he may be delivered, make Haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, he says. Let them be confounded that seek after my soul. He was in trouble. He was in danger. But of course, unlike the majority of people in our society today, King David he knew who to call upon in the time of trouble, in the time of distress, to read God's Word, and particularly the book of Psalms, you find there just about every experience and all that uh, men and women go through today, yourself and myself alike, all kinds of troubles and trials, storms, you know, and on. King David, you know, he uh, calls upon the name of the Lord, his maker God, that is the triune God, and of course in doing so, he does so uh, through, uh, well, through God's Son, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. The one, of course, whom well, the whole Bible talks about beginning to end. These are they, Jesus says, that testify of me. It doesn't matter where you go. In the Bible, you find reference there. Everywhere you find reference to Jesus, the Son of God, who would come into the world, has come into the world, to save, to deliver us, and to bring us back to God. So you find David, you find him calling upon the name of the Lord. And of course, we're told elsewhere in the Bible that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be delivered. That's the prayer, that's the cry, that's the call here of King David, that the Lord uh, would confound his enemies, the enemies of his soul, and it brings me, you know, to, uh, well, to think, you know, that there are many enemies that you and I, that we have enemies of our soul, you know, that uh, you might not believe today, you might not be a person who calls upon the name of the Lord today, but, you know, maybe the time will come in your life, maybe you'll hear something today, something sown in your mind. You know, maybe perhaps in a time of trouble, distress, later on, 
Maybe, who knows, even when your life is ebbing from you, maybe perhaps some of the things spoken here today by my colleague and myself, maybe something, you know, will be brought to mind and maybe perhaps you'll remember that if you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, that is, maybe perhaps he come to you, deliver you, save you. But rest assured, you have enemies that war against your soul. You might not believe, but I tell you, there are forces, there are powers that do, and there are warring, that are fighting against, you know, against you. And of course, uh, you might say have an interest, more of an interest in your soul than you do have for yourself, for your own soul. There are the satanic forces, you know, the, the initial tempt of the one uh, who brought sin into the world. This is, the Bible tells us, how it all began. Satan, the devil, that old serpent, the enemy of man's soul, tempting man, a first parent, not just the first man, but of course the entire, the head of the entire race tempted Adam and Eve and brought sin and death into the world by his temptation. He believes, the Bible says, and the forces of evil, satanic forces, they believe, they tremble at the very thought, the concept of God doesn't trouble you perhaps, but he's the one you know when you're tempted to do evil. Well, he's the one that's the back of it, you know. And I tell you, well, he would have, he would have more interest in your soul, but it's damnation, not its salvation. He would have more interest in your soul than you do. But of course, of course, we, we ask the question, well, who, who could possibly, who could possibly deliver themselves against such a foe, such an enemy, such a powerful force? He has hosts at his disposal, powers of darkness, of evil, unseen forces, of which you and I, of course, are more often than not unaware of, and of course, unable to fight to war against. So you see, in such a time of temptation to evil, reminding yourself maybe perhaps that you do indeed have an enemy, somebody who wants to populate not heaven but hell, the lake of fire, that where he is bound for, wishes to populate hell with your soul. So my friends, you have an enemy, you see, enemies that you don't even know about. And David, he prays, he cries out to the Lord that the Lord would deliver him from his enemy. Maybe perhaps you ought to cry out to the Lord that he deliver you from Satan, uh, the one who would tempt you to evil, the one who would bring your soul down, bring you not just to the grave, but down even to hell. The Bible uh, refers to him in the New Testament, even as the God of this age who blinds the minds of men and women. Maybe perhaps that's the reason why you're in unbelief today. Maybe it's his blinding, blinding you to the reality of God, uh, the reality of his, his son, the reality even of your sin. Uh, you go about God's world here, you know, uh, eating the food, uh, drinking the water that he uh, kindly uh, provides for you with no thought of God in your heart and mind, and maybe perhaps even railing against him. And maybe perhaps with the uh, uh, thoughts towards atheism, you know, uh, and perhaps maybe, maybe I'm, I'm sure in fact, you know, that, that the back of that, uh, the godlessness, the atheism of our day and generation, that he, these satanic forces, they have, they have a hand in it. The God of this age, cast out of heaven, you see, uh, the earth, the earthly sphere now is his domain, you see. 
and he wanders to and fro uh, with his forces. And this is one of the things that he does to men and women. He blinds them. I mean, we already have a blindness, naturally speaking, as we come into the world and sin, born in sin with sinful natures, again God. And of course, well, the last thing we need is another enemy blinding our minds to the reality of God and the reality of his love, the reality of the salvation and that he has appointed for men and women that they might be saved. And who, well, who I ask you can remove the blindness that he has put in place, who can open your eyes? Well, Jesus says that's uh, one of the classes of people that he came for, the blind, to open the eyes of the blind, he said. And so you see, my friends, through, through Jesus Christ, calling upon him, deliver me from uh, the God of this age, the enemy of my soul, Maybe that should be your prayer. Take away the blindness that Satan has brought upon me and help me to see more clearly. Help me to see spiritually. Because no man, you see, unless God removes the blinker, unless he takes the veil that's over us, unless he removes that satanic blindness, we cannot see. We walk about God's world as, as blind men and women. Spiritually, I mean, spiritually blind, unaware of God, unaware of the vastness, the immensity, the greatness of his love he has for your soul. Satan, the God of this age, who blinds you, he hates your soul. He wants you in hell. The last thing he wants is you in the arms of Jesus, safe and sound for eternity. So you have an enemy, my friend. And you need, like David, you need to cry out to God, call upon the name of the Lord, that he might confound your enemies and deliver you from them and deliver your soul, bring about your soul's salvation. Uh, uh, the Bible tells us that Satan, that old serpent, the devil, that he's the arch deceiver. Jesus tells us he was a liar from the beginning and a murderer. And the Bible tells us that in the last days, the last times in which we are in, that this would be one of his uh, main instruments of deceiving men and women, more and more deceiving men and women, not enabling them to see and to understand the truth and lay hold upon the truth that would that would, that would save them, that would set them free from him. Oh, but he's a, he's a master deceiver. He deceived our first parents, Adam and Eve. He hoodwinked them and he's quite able, I tell you, to deceive you. And many, many of the ploys that he uses, he uses uh, false philosophy philosophies such as evolution uh, to deceive the minds, the hearts of men and women. Oh, what a tool is that? I tell you, in your Western world today, that's probably the greatest deceit of them all today. Darwin's and Dawkins, the daft fools of, of Satan has used them to, to deceive the hearts and minds of thousands, if not millions, of men, women, and children in our world today. Another instrument that he uses, you know, to deceive men and women is that of false religion. It doesn't matter the variety. Oh, he'd be quite happy for you to become religious today. I'm talking about human religion, human invented religion. I'm talking, my friends, about about just pure legalism, do this and do that. That's what your world religions are, from Mecca to Rome and everywhere else in between. It's all do, 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 do this, and you'll be right with God, they'll tell you. Oh, Satan loved to, loved to deceive you with that. Well, God says in his word that no man shall be saved by doing. No flesh shall ever be justified before him by his doing. 
So, you see, my friends, say, Satan, the enemy of your soul, the one who would blind you to the reality of God and the truth, and the one who would deceive you uh, with false philosophies of men, evolutionism, false religion, quite happy for you to be religious. And the more religious you became, the happier he would be with it. Because the more blinded you become, the more deceived you become. You do your religion. And whatever the variety is, it matters not. You think simply by your doing, and the more you're doing, you think the more you're pleasing to God, and you're not because you can't be pleasing to God without faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. It's impossible. Without faith, the Bible says, in Jesus, that is, without faith, it is impossible for a man, a woman, to be saved, to please God. It pleases God only that you trust in His Son, Jesus Christ, the one who has done the work, the only work that needed doing, dying on the cross, shedding His blood for sinners so that we could be reconciled to God, washed and made clean, acceptable to God, our sin dealt with, and by His resurrection, uh, justifying us, making us completely and totally right with God. Jesus has done everything necessary. Nothing for you to do, me to do, or anybody else, but Satan will tell you, oh, you need to be more religious. You need to do this, you need to do that. That's what the false religions will tell you. But the back of them, the back of all idolatry, and that's what false religion is, my friends. It's idolatry, contrary to the Word of God. And the back of idolatry, the Bible says, is demons, the forces, the hosts of Satan, that old serpent, the devil, who wars against your soul, who desires your soul, not because he loves you, but because he wants you in hell, screaming in that lake of fire, tormented for all eternity with him. Your end will be as his is, if you allow him to deceive you. And I tell you this only one antidote to the deceit and to the blindness that Satan would bring upon you. And that's the Word of God. That's the truth as it is in Jesus. That's why God gave us the Bible so that we would not be deceived. God gave us the Bible so that we would know the truth and that the truth would make us free. Freedom, my friends, is found in Christ. In Christ there is now no condemnation. United to Christ, connected to Christ. By faith that is, by believing. The command is, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. He's made full satisfaction for my sins and delivered me from all the power of the devil. That's what Jesus has done for me. And I would that he would do the same for you. If you would but call upon his name, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Jesus, that is, shall be saved, is God's assurance. Call upon him today. Be a wise man. Be a wise person like King David. And cry out to God that he would confound the enemy of your soul, Satan the devil. Oh, Jesus tells us, he was a murderer from the beginning. Satan, the devil, that is, that old serpent who tempted, who brought down our first parents, Adam and Eve, the first man, the head of the human race. He brought him crashing down. And my friends, he's still doing the same today, murdering the souls of men and women. I tell you, every soul that goes out of this world unsaved, unforgiven, I tell you, murdered by the devil, murdered by the God of this age, murdered by Satan, by his, his blinding and by his deceiving. Oh, be not deceived. Oh, perhaps maybe he would say, what are you talking about? I've got no enemies. Oh, not seen ones, perhaps, unseen ones forces of darkness, powers, I tell you, 
amazing, astonishing powers that you and I are not able to deal with, not able to set ourselves free from. There's the snare of the, 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 snare of the devil, the Bible said. A snare. If you know anything about snares, my friends, when an animal gets caught in a snare, the more and more it struggles against it, the tighter that the snare becomes until it chokes the light out of them. And here you are today by your unbelief and by the deceit of the enemy of your soul, Satan. Here you are in the snare of the devil. And you can fight and struggle on your own, but the more and more you do, the tighter that snare will become the tighter his hold will be upon you. Only one person who can cut it. Only one person who can break the snare and set you free. But that's why Jesus came. That's why God sent his son. So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever should believe in his son Jesus, that is, should be set free from the snare of the devil set free from the arch enemy of your soul, the one who would murder your soul, damn you, the one who would bring you down into the lake of fire with himself. Oh, call upon the name of the Lord today, my friends. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved from the enemy of their soul these satanic forces. And of course, well, you would think that's enough. That's enough to be fighting against, but there's even more. There's even more, my friends. There's the self-destruction. I know people, and I think it's, I think this pertains to most people. I think it would be true of just about everybody in Hanley who's not saved, that is who doesn't know God through his son, Jesus Christ, you would rather be damned than be saved. You see, my friends, we need saving not just from Satan. We need, we need saving not just, from, not, just from the, not just from the devil and his forces, but we need to be saved from ourselves. We are our own worst enemies sometimes. That self-destruction, you say. Oh, be a Christian, are you joking? Reading a Bible, saying prayers, going to a church. I've other things to do. I've got sin. I've got sin to delight in. I, I've other priorities. I want to be wealthy and healthy. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, says Jesus, and his righteousness and all the rest shall be added unto you. Self-destruction, my friend. Man's original sin. Conceived in sin, born in sin. And we come into the world shaping in iniquity, doing lawless deeds, that is. All the time, continually, the imaginations and thoughts of our hearts, says God, are only evil. All the time, my friends, never a good thought, never a good thing, never a good deed. There's none good, says God, and there's none that doeth good. If it's not done through faith in the Son of God, it's not good, says God. So you see, my friends, you have no goodness, nothing but continual evil in the imaginations and thoughts of your heart. There's that original condition in which you came into the world, out of your mother's womb into this world, in sin and live in sin, in blindness and darkness and willfulness against God all your days, unless the grace of God intervenes. But then I ask you who can change their nature. I ask you who can change uh, what they are by nature. Is that possible? No, of course it is. I am what I am. Isn't that the excuse? It's no, no excuse. It's no reason at all. But you use the excuse. Well, well, I was made this way. I was born this way. I can't help it. No excuse, my friend. 
We get those sinful natures, you see. We inherit them from sinful parents all the way back to Adam, but we're still accountable. We're still accountable. The whole human race is accountable to God for that sin. And so I tell you, there's only one answer to that original sin, that sinful nature. Only one answer, that's that you receive a new nature. That is that you're born again, as Jesus would put it. You must be born again, he said. Except the man be born again. Unless you see you're born of God, born a second time. Unless you can tell me you have a second birthday. Not your first one, not the natural one. Not returning to your mother's womb and be born again physically, but spiritually. God coming to you, putting his, putting his life into your soul and his love into your heart, making you all over again a new creation in Jesus Christ is how uh, the Bible terms it. Only well, answer to that original sin, man's nature, out of which comes all the all the violence and all the uncleanness all the filth of your world. I mean, look at your world. That's the best that man can do. Look at your world from Afghanistan to Alaska and everywhere else in between. And see what man, see what the wisdom of this world, see what the wisdom of man, see what the intellect of man has produced. That's your world. It's in a damnable mess. But you say, well, where on earth does this come from? Why don't we love one another? Why don't we do good? I mean, isn't that what you say? We don't need this religion. Let's all just love one another. Wonderful. Go do it. Why don't you do it? But no, you do the very opposite, hating and hating one another. <coughs> That's the natural state. That's your nature. And that's where it all comes from. And unless that nature is turned around, unless you're given a new nature. But the man or woman, you see, born again of the Spirit of God is given a new nature, partaker of the divine nature even, a perfect righteousness in Jesus Christ given to them holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So you see, you've got enemies. You've got Satan who wars against your soul. You've got yourself. You've got your original sin. You've got your original nature in which you were born and conceived. And then says God, you've got a deceitful heart. I mean, who needs Satan? to deceive them from we've got deceitful hearts that are desperately wicked, says God, above all things. That's the heart of man and woman. That's the nature of the beast, you might say. And oh, oh, my friends, that heart, you see, only the gospel addresses the, the heart. You see, you can go to Mecca, you can go to Rome and again they'll tell you do and do. It doesn't address the heart. Human religion doesn't reach the heart. It can't reach the heart. Only the gospel reaches the heart. But of course that's why men and women don't want it. Because it addresses the heart. Because it's an issue. It's an enemy within you. Your heart that you can't deal with yourself. You're impotent, you're powerless to deal with it. Religion can't deal with it. You can't deal with it. The Pope, the priest, the mullah can't deal with it. Only Jesus can. The master surgeon, you see, he must come and perform the heart surgery. Open your heart up and let out the pus of sin. And then heal you, make you whole, you see, give you a heart no longer deceitful, take the lie and the lust out of your heart, give you a new heart.
taking the heart of stone out of you that hates God and hates your neighbor and giving you a heart that loves God and loves your neighbor. Heart surgery, my friends, that only the gospel, only Jesus, only the Son of God can perform. So another enemy, you see, your own heart. And then, of course, you'll have those people who'll tell you, oh, just go with your heart, follow your heart, they'll say the worst advice that you could be given. Because it's the most deceitful thing of all, says God. Desperately wicked. So don't be doing that. Follow Jesus, and he'll give you eternal life, and you shall never perish. Hear his voice, hearken to his voice, cry out to him, make haste, come to me, O God, and deliver me. Confound the enemies of my soul and deliver me. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then there's your carnal desire, desiring that which you should not. Desiring everything that's contrary to God's law. Those Ten Commandments. No other gods before me. Desiring other deities, so called. Uh, thou shalt not commit adultery. Desiring another man's wife. Uh, or desiring, desiring sexual activity outside the confines of holy matrimony. Wrong desires, carnal desires. And these carnal desires, they cannot be adjusted. They cannot, you cannot be delivered from them by yourself. They're too strong for you. They're too powerful for you. They control you. That's why you're always desiring the wrong thing, that which is contrary to God. You need Jesus to deliver you from those carnal lusts that war against your soul, enemy of your soul, that would bring you down, that would destroy you. Oh, can you not see it? Can you not see the desires of your nation? Can you not see the desires of your world working out at this time? the things that men and women desire. Listen to the culture vultures and all the emails that they're putting before you. They know, they know your carnal desires better than you do. My friend, just last night was preaching outside a, a university down south, and nine, over 90%, 90% of the young students that he spoke with claimed to be sodomites, young men claimed to be sodomites, homosexual, carnal, filthy desires, abominable in the sight of God. God will bring you to judgment for these carnal desires. No desire for God. No hunger for God. No crying out to God. No thirsting after God. The one that you should desire above all others, anything else, but no desire for Him. Wealth, health, prosperity, iniquity, lawlessness, Anything that's contrary to the holy commandment you desire. The enemy of your soul. Self-destruction it's called. That you need delivering from. Make haste, O God, come to me. Confound my enemies, says David, and deliver me from them. The enemies of man's soul. Your stubborn will, though you hear the truth, and maybe sometimes, maybe sometimes in a contemplative moment, you think to yourself, that makes sense. That makes sense. That's really what I need. 
That really is what I should do, but you don't do it. Why? Because Jesus said, you're not willing to come to me that you might have life. You're not willing. There's life to be had. There's life to be found in Jesus. Abundant life. This is what I came for, that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Comes to give eternal life. But what do you say? What do you do? You say, no, I will not. I will not. I'd rather be damned than believe. I'd rather die than live. That's what you say. Foolish, willful, blind, stubbornness. You're your own worst enemy, I tell you. Self-destruction is called. So don't go be go be going about Harley today and saying you ain't got no enemies you have. You've got the satanic forces warred against your soul. You've got yourself to deal with. That's more I tell you than any man, more than any religion can deal with. I tell you, only one person who can deal with them, and that's Jesus. That's the Son of God who came into the world that you might be saved from such. That you might call upon his name, the name of the Lord, that you might be saved. That's where the deliverance comes from. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord and he will show mercy abundantly pardoned. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you, says Jesus. Seeking the Lord with all your heart, wholeheartedly, God says, you will find him. Not far away. Not hard to find. Search the scriptures, Jesus said. Oh, thank you, sir. That's very kind of you. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day, sir. <coughs> Some kind people down the world today. Eh? So as I say, rather, Jesus says, as you seek the Lord, the righteousness of God first, and get your priorities right because you've got a soul in you. And you've got enemies that war against your soul that want to bring you down to hell. Oh, you say, well, you know, I, I'm young, I've got lots of years ahead of me, I can think about these things, yeah, do that by all means, you must do. But you don't know, you don't know that you've got many years. You don't know if you've got another day, you don't even know if you'll see this day through. Huh? You put your socks on this morning, who knows, maybe the undertaker take them off tonight. Huh? You wouldn't be expecting that, would you? But it's happened, I tell you, a million times before. The only time you've got now. Now is the accepted time, says God. Now is the day of salvation. Because you've only got today to seek the Lord that you might find him, to call upon his name that you might be saved, that you might be delivered. So that won't do you any good. That's just a popish business. Call in the name of the Lord that you might be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name, the Lord Jesus, the mighty Savior and only deliverer. Read the Gospels for yourself. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John sees activity, giving sight to the blind, healing the sick, coming, water into wine, raising the dead to life. He commands the man dead for three days, come forth, and he comes forth. He's able to make you alive, bring you out of the deadness of your soul, dead in your trespasses and sins, 
says the Bible. Jesus, the command, the mighty command, come forth and you live. But you never live. You never live until you connect with Jesus. No matter if it does, you only exist. Existence is not living. You don't get life until you come to Jesus. You come into the world, you're born into an existence for a certain number of years. And then it comes to an end and you go out still in a state of death, never having tasted life. I am the resurrection and the life, says Jesus. He that believes on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Believest thou this? You must. Faith in the mighty deliverer, the mighty son of God, who conquered sin and death and hell, who overcame them. And that victory can be yours. The defeat of all the enemies of your soul, the satanic forces, the self-destruction, sin and death and hell. But Jesus is the only one. He's the only deliverer. He's the only mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus, appointed of God, anointed of his Father, <coughs> and sent into the world for this purpose, my friends, to fetch us, to bring us back to God because we're not able to find our way back to God with our own rationality, our own reasoning, our own thinking. Jesus must reveal himself to you. God must command the light to shine in your heart and mind and reveal the knowledge of himself in Jesus Christ. But that's what Christ came for. And one of the things we are told in the Bible, one of the reasons why he died on the cross to bring us to God, to overcome the enemy of self, of your own heart, and to overcome the satanic forces that would blind you. Victory you see is in Jesus. This is the faith that overcomes the world. The victory, rather, that overcomes the world of sin and unbelief, ruled by satanic powers. This is the victory. Even our faith, believing in Jesus. If thou canst believe, everything is possible to him that believeth. Cry out to God. I believe, help my unbelief. Cry out to him, confound and deliver me from my enemy, as does King David here. Victory in Jesus. Oh, my friend, through his death and resurrection, through his work, all done, all paid for, the hymn writer says, full atonement can it be? Hallelujah, what a savior, yes, complete salvation, beginning to end, done and dusted, all accomplished. Why, you can do nothing. Why, you can add nothing. You must simply and only Receive. He came to his own, but his own received him not. But to those who did receive him, to those who believed on his name, he gave them the power, the authority, the right to become that which they were not, children of God. Saved, delivered and brought into the family of God for time and for eternity. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. He died on the cross and he rose again from the dead 
and he ascended to heaven and he shut the mouth of the devil once and for all. No longer does he have access to heaven. No longer is he allowed access to God to accuse my brothers and sisters and myself. Cast out of heaven by the returning King Jesus who rules and reigns from heaven. That's why Satan, the devil, the enemy of your soul, is called the god of this age, of this world. He roams it, looking to devour and murder and blind and deceive the souls of men and women and fetch them down into hell, the torments of hell and damnation forever. Don't allow him to do that. Don't be self-deceived and don't be deceived by Satan. Neither believe the truth and you will be liberated. You will be set free. Believe the truth as it is in Jesus and you will be made well. You will be saved. You will be given eternal life, everlasting life. You will be given a perfect righteousness and a perfect relationship with your maker, with God, that can never be violated, never be broken, never again to be separated from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, my Lord. And why the Bible says Christ Jesus came into the world. What for? To make men religious? To make you uh, Islamists? To make you Romanists? To make you Je Jehovah's Witnesses? To make you Mormons? To make you Buddhists? To make you evolutionists? Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners! Sinner, which we all are. For all who sin they come short of the glory of God. None righteous, no, not once is God. Through faith in the Son of God, who came into the world, who loved sinners, who loved sinners and gave himself for them, who came voluntarily, who came willingly, who came in love, to live that blameless life and to die that death on the cross and to rise again mighty from the grave to overcome sin and death and hell. Such is the expression of God's love. And I tell you, the only place you'll find the expression of God's love in the cross of His Son, nowhere else. Everywhere else you look, my friend, nothing but the wrath of God. Look away, look away, look to the cross, the Son of God, bleeding and dying for sinners, shedding his blood to wash them, cleanse them, justify them for all eternity. So, my friend, do remember, will you please, you have enemies of your soul, just as King David did, but like him cry out, make haste, O Lord, make haste, come to me, he says, deliver me, help me, O Lord, call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved, confound and deliver me from my enemies that seek my life. Call upon the name of the Lord that he might deliver you from the enemies of your soul, those that would take the life from you. Jesus came that you might have life. He came to give life. I did not come to kill, he said. 
I did not come to destroy. I did not come to judge. I came to save. He's a savior, right, royal, and true. And he saves all who come to him. I will in no wise cast out them that come to me. No sinner ever came to Jesus, sincerely, truly believing, and was turned away from him. An absolute divine impossibility I will in no wise cast out him that cometh to me. Come to him today. He bids you to. He says, come unto me. Come unto me. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest for your soul. Peace with God and the peace of God that passes all understanding. All oh, whosoever shall call upon the Lord, the mighty, mighty Lord Jesus Christ, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hearken to his call today. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Faith in the Son of God, deliverance from all your enemies. Repent ye and believe the gospel, Hanley. Repent ye, repent ye, repent ye and believe the gospel. For the kingdom, God, so close. Call oh, today while you may. Don't leave it too late. Don't leave it another day. Today, call. Oh, on the name of the Lord and be saved. If you'd like to have a copy of God's Word, check these things out for yourself. It's all here in God's written Word. Extracts from the Bible offered to you freely. The cost, no obligation to you. You're simply and only for the taking. Like one. Come and ask for one. Gladly, freely place into your hand. What of God, the engrafted one that is able, able, I tell you, to save your soul. Like a copy of God's word, you come and ask for one. May God bless you, Hanley. Bless you, I say, and of mercy, mercy upon your precious, precious, never. Dying souls.